Hi, I'm Andrew Scott, and I'm really excited to be telling you about my new book, The Longevity Imperatives. The book is about something incredibly important to each and every one of us. It's about something that's going to determine the quality of the rest of your life. But it's not just about you as an individual. It's also about a huge macro trend that requires a rethink of society and also ushers in a whole new era for humanity. So what's the book about? It's about a simple but very deceptive idea. For the first time in human history, the young and middle age can expect to become not just old, but very old. In the UK, for instance, the government estimates that a newborn child today has a 50% chance of living into their early or mid-90s, and a one in six chance of making it to 100. How does that make you feel? When I talk to people about living to 100, they worry. They worry about outliving their health. They worry about running out of money, running out of skills, running out of friends, and running out of purpose. And that is the crucial part of the longevity imperative. Because if you are now likely to become old, and if you fear getting old, what are you going to do now to ensure that you age well? The book is about what you can do at every age to ensure that the longer lives we're now living are ones where you do have your health, you have purpose, you have uh, energy, and you have skills and friendship and motivation. The problem is society has never had to tackle this problem before because only a minority of people ever became old. But when the vast majority can now expect to become old, we have to change how we think, we have to change how we act, and we also have to restructure some fundamental issues of how we live our life and how society supports us. That's why I wrote The Longevity Imperative. And I got four aims with the book. The first is I want you to think differently about the rest of your life. The second is I want to elevate longevity up there with AI and climate change as a trend that as individuals and society we need to adapt and adjust to to ensure that we have a good future. The third aim I've got is to get rid of the notion of the ageing society with its focus on the rising number of old people and the whole host of problems that come with that. I want to replace that ageing society story with a longevity narrative, one that focuses upon how we seize the opportunities that these longer lives present. And the fourth is to outline what I call a three-dimensional longevity dividend. We already have these long lives. How do we make them not just long, but also healthier for longer and productive for longer? This book shows what changes we have to make as individuals and also to society to achieve those aims. As such, it covers a huge range of topics. It's about how you focus on keeping healthy and happier for longer, how you manage your work, your careers, and your finances for longer. But it also looks at the deep systemic changes we need to our health system, to our economy, and to our financial sector. But of course, it involves so much more. It involves thinking about aging in a different way. So it requires changes in our culture, our politics, and our psychology. The book literally covers everything from what you should eat for breakfast right through to why humanity is entering a whole new era of its history. Past progress created longer lives. Future progress is about seizing the opportunities for that extra time and changing how we age. I can't think of a more important factor that's going to influence your future. It's time we talked about a longevity society, not an aging society. It's time we move to an evergreen era and seize the longevity imperative.